hello. What I'd like to do now is show you how to fill a, a greaseproof piping bag with rhylysine and to talk to you about tubes, piping tubes. Okay, so I've got a selection here for you to look at. So in your kit you have you'll have large piping tubes, probably plastic. You can get them in metal as well. But these large ones are called survive tubes and they're to work with confectionery um, or buttercream, uh, fresh cream, or even piping, shoe pastry, and so on. You'll use, find them really useful. But the large ones are better used with the big plastic piping bags. Um, we don't use these very often in cake decorating, so I'm just going to put those to one side. The smaller piping tubes are the piping tubes for the, the, the detail when you're piping on cakes or biscuits and or even cupcakes. So I've got a selection here. You've got more than this in your kit and you'll find that there's a number on each tube. There's basically two makes of tubes um, and this one which is called PME is the tube that um, you have in your kits. It's a really good quality tube. It's not cheap, but they're quite expensive to replace. So it's really important to look after them. But you have the name PME and you also have the number. Another make of tube that's, um, that's is available, but I haven't seen it for a few years now, is Becknell. Now somebody, you know, people pass the piping tubes on. So if somebody offers you piping tubes, um, don't throw them away just because they're not Becknell tubes. But this is a piping tube called Becknell. You can see it's a little bit narrower. The only problem with this one is it does stain, so the metal doesn't stop as shiny as these. And you can see here how it becomes a little bit tarnished. But these piping tubes, um, and I've got lots of them, are years old. It's not very often I replace piping tubes. The one that tends to need replacing every again, again is a number one tube. Um, which is the finest piping tube you'll have in your kit. It's a very tiny round circle and it's a number one. So that tube we do need to look after because they, because it's so small, they do tend to get damaged. Uh, number two is the next one. So they go from one, two is a little bit bigger and number three is a little bit bigger still. Now, when you come in to clean your tubes at the end of your work, what you need to do is really look after them. So you would, as, as you're finished with a piping tube, just pop them into a bowl of soapy water and then take them to the sink and clean them out. And it's really important you clean them out with a soft brush because we don't want the tubes damaged. Um, just with a soft brush, wash the rhylicin out under hot soapy water and then dry it and store them. Um, and that goes for the number one tube as well. So using your brush, clean out that tip. What you never, ever, ever should do is use a cocktail stick to clean out brushes or anything hard and pointed. So people can sometimes pick up a wire to clean the piping tube and they start pushing it down and that's how it becomes damaged and you then have to replace it. These tubes and sometimes cost about five pound a tube, so you can imagine how many you can go through. Now definitely use a brush to clean out your tubes, or you can put them in a bowl of water um, and keep them overnight, and all the rye icing will dissolve in the hot water, and then just wash them out the next day. Try not to lose them because they, because they're so small, it's very easy to lose them. So at the end of the day, check that you've got all your tubes and if I was you I wouldn't let anybody else use your tube because piping tubes can get very damaged easily and and can get lost and they're very expensive to replace. Okay so I've got my rhylicine so my rhylicine is stored in a plastic bag in cling film with a damp cloth, <laughs> lots of layers to go through. 
Okay, so I've got the low lighting. But since I'm working with it, I'm always going to have a damp cloth on it. I'll never leave it exposed to the air because it will dry out, crust over around the edge. There's dry bits of rye lysine or go in the piping tubes and they'll block your tubes. Now, I've already shown you how to make a piping bag. So you can rip off the end of your piping bag or if you're happier, you can cut it off with a pair of scissors. And you just want it big enough to see, to see the tip of the tube coming through. Okay. So when you put your tube in, just take it and just throw it in so you can see the end of the tube. Now, paper piping bags, the greaseproof piping bags, will come apart. So it's important that you, um, you be careful with them. So you take some rye lysine on your palette knife, not too much, because this is a small bag. Okay. You then... Put it down into the bag, if you can't see that, down into the bag and just put your finger against the palette knife and scrape off the rye lysine. Okay. Just move that out of the way. Always covering it up. So you can see I've got the rye lysine in there. Just take the top and fold it over and fold it down. And if you lose the, the tube, don't worry, it will come out in the end. Okay. Now the reason I'm folding it over and down as I go is to stop that rye lysine coming out the wrong end. I want it to come out this end. Keep your thumb on top and that will also stop the rye lysine coming out. And then you squeeze it and the rye lysine comes through. Now this is a number two tube I've put in here. A number two tube is a small tube and so is a number one. And I always use a small bag. Okay, so I've used a small bag. And you can see I haven't put much in there. You'll be surprised if that small amount of rye lysine will do quite a few cakes. So, nice and comfortable for me to use. If I ever fill the bag, it will be very uncomfortable to work with and my, the result of my piping work will not be as good. Okay. So, while I'm leaving it, I'm just going to put it, just the tip, in an, a damp cloth. So I've got that, a damp cloth, and that will stop the tip drying out while I'm working. And a lot of the time, we, we use quite a few bags on a cake. So we, I might, you know, doing a cake I might have 10 20 bags sitting there ready to use for a larger tube so perhaps the the star tube which is um I think you can see that um this one's a 44 or a 42 or 43 depending on the size that you've got would need a larger bag because if you use a small bag if you've just got a small amount to do you're fine but if not you'll be always filling it up so I've got my tube coming out the end. So this time, I'm going to put a little bit more rye lysine in. Always try and keep yourself nice and tidy as you go. Okay. So I've got the rye lysine, place it in against the finger again, scrape it off. And I'm going to put more into it than that because it is a larger bag but not too much that I'm going to have trouble containing that rye lice and it's going to spill out. Fold the bag in and bring it down. So you can see there, I've got quite a, a lot more rye lice in than the other one. It will go a long way. It's a big tube, I'll use more of it. So just think of the rule, big tube, big bag, small tube, small bag. Now if you come against a problem, if you can't, when you fill your bag, sometimes the paper moves a little bit and if you can't see your tube and it's the, the paper's covering it, don't panic. Just take a little bit of that paper and just tear it off. 
and then you should be able to see your piping tube. Okay. Now, if your piping bag runs out, don't panic. People think they can open it up and refill it. No, that doesn't work. All you need to do is take some paper, take it off, You don't even need to uh, to um, wash the tube. What you can do, you can just pop that straight into another piping bag. And fill it up again. Always check when you're filling your bag whether the right icing is the right consistency for the work you're doing. Fold it over. And you're off again. Okay. Now when you come to hold the piping bag, if it's a small piping bag, you put your thumb on top and your two fingers each side. So I don't think you can see that very well. Okay. So the top, your thumb on top will stop it coming out the wrong end and you'll be able to put pressure on the bag so that the right lighting will come out. Always have a damp cloth at hand, you can just wipe your tube and you can start off. What you also do is you rest it. Now you rest your piping bag on your other hand. Now if you're right, you're left handed, you just turn that over and you rest it on your right hand. If I'm right handed, hold it with my right hand and right, rest it on my left hand. Okay. So the reason you're resting it is because, because you're going to squeeze with that hand, it can charge the shake and this hand will just steady it and you'll be able to pipe a lot more accurately. Okay. What you don't do is squeeze it with both hands. Okay. So it's just squeeze with one hand and pipe with the other. I'm just going to put it good. That's better. When you're holding a larger bag, a little bit different, because if you're piping and you might find that this thumb after a while gets a little bit sore, you can hold it like that. So I'm tucking it in here. So I'm tucking it there so it will stop the rye lysing coming out. I've then got a little bit more pressure on the bag to work with. Um, still rest it on your other hand and you can squeeze without it hurting your thumb. Okay. Now if you can imagine when I've finished at the end of the day and I come to throw these paper bags away, how easy it is to, to throw away your piping tube. So just first thing you do, take it out wash them, count them, and then clear off the rest of your mess. Okay, thank you very much.